Don't quit before the miracle happens. Don't give up on knowing the joy of experiencing the depth of Christ's love. Seeing Jesus, hearing Christ call our name and giving new life is worth the wait. It's worth the challenge and worth the struggle and the uncertainties. I know this is going to sound like Captain Obvious, but I'll state it anyway. We've had a rough couple of last years, haven't we? It's been a challenging for everyone. For many, our faith has been quite tried in challenges, and we have lost loved ones, people have moved in their transitions, people have graduated, family have died, church expectations have gone all which way, and your business and your families and the world's, it's been crazy. There has been uncertainty about pretty much everything, and we need to acknowledge that living like that, we've had to in these last few years, living that way has been downright exhausting may not realize it, but it has been. We may have said and we may have done things during the pandemic that we're not proud of. This kind of stress truly wears on all of us. Well, Peter, in John's Gospel, the the beloved disciple, and Mary Magdalene suffered from grief, and they suffered from exhaustion, and added to that intense trauma as they watched their friend and their loved one be put to death by Rome. We do well to recognize the suffering Jesus went through on Good Friday. We, I think we do a really good job of that. But I think also that it can be relatively easy for us to forget the trauma and the grief that Jesus' friends and family went through too. Men and women put their hope and their trust in Jesus and following him and his vision for the kingdom of God. True, yes. The disciples missed some of Jesus' lessons and points. They could be a bit dense, uh, but they, weren't, they were Jesus' closest followers. And, and to be fair, we don't always get all of Jesus' teachings either. I know I can be a bit slow on the uptake sometimes with Jesus' principles. All of us can, if we'll be honest. I'm sure that Peter felt awful as he denied Christ. The others may have well second-guessed and replayed their interactions their last interactions with Jesus before his death, too. Mary Magdalene and Peter and the beloved disciple would have been physically and emotionally wiped out after witnessing their leader and their best friend's crucifixion. And yet, Mary awakens so early that it's still dark outside. She walks to Jesus' tomb and finds it empty. She runs back to tell Peter and this beloved disciple, and the two fellows have a a foot race to Jesus' tomb to find it empty. The beloved disciple looks into the tomb but doesn't initially go in. He's a bit hesitant. Peter gets there and in his typically rambunctious, um, boisterous self, he barges into the tomb. He sees the linen wrappings lying there in the cloth. Then the, uh, the beloved disciple follows Peter into that tomb. And we're told that the beloved disciple saw and believed. And then they simply return and go back to their homes. But Mary's different, isn't she? Mary sticks around. The two fellows head home, and one could argue possibly unchanged. Or at best, the two of them walking back to their homes were trying to piece together what happened, trying to make sense of things, of the scene. But Mary stays and she weeps outside of Jesus' tomb, and she feels her grief. She allows her grief to be fully expressed, She looks into Jesus' tomb, and now instead of seeing an empty tomb, she looks in and she sees two angels who ask her why she's weeping. And and to us today, that seems kind of like a strange question to our thinking after Jesus had been crucified. Let's be real here. She explains her search for Jesus' body, but now, now when she turns around, Jesus is standing before her. Mary's blinded by her grief. She's absolutely blinded by grief. Jesus is right in front of her, and she doesn't see Jesus. She supposes him to be the gardener. She even pleads with Jesus to let her know where they have taken him so she can go and take him away. But Jesus calls her by name. Mary? When Jesus speaks her name, she immediately 
recognizes him. Mary finally sees Jesus again. She hears Jesus' familiar voice now as he calls her name. And Jesus does what he does so often, this pattern we'll study and, and we'll, we'll talk about in this Easter tide. Jesus sends Mary to go and to tell others what she has seen. Indeed, Mary lets go of her embrace of Jesus. She was holding on tightly. She goes and she announces to the others, I have seen the Lord. Let that sink in. I have seen the Lord. We can be too quick. And we can leave much too early. The two guys quickly look about and they head back home. But Mary lingered. Mary allowed herself to stay present with her grief and with the tomb. And in those brief extra moments, Mary encounters two angels and Jesus himself. My friends in Christ, do not quit before the miracle happens. Often in life, we give up way too soon. We wonder and we wrestle with life's issues and challenges. We'll do that for a bit. But like Mary and the others, we forget Jesus' promise of resurrection. Or we might even think Jesus' promise of resurrection too good to be true. We forget that Jesus on the cross and placed in Joseph's tomb isn't the end of the story. I have seen the Lord. There is resurrection. And there is new life in unexpected people. In unexpected people and places and things today, there is new life. But we have to stick around. We have to stick around with Mary to witness the miracle. We're all on different walks of our faith journey, every single one of us here. And I know our paths are full of ups and downs and twists and turns. This morning, this Easter morning, I invite you to choose intentionally to linger with Mary. Whether you remain near Jesus in your grief or in your joy or in your confusion, remain near Jesus and keep looking and keep listening for him. Listen for Jesus to call you by name. Rejoice in resurrection. And don't you dare quit until the miracle of resurrection happens. Because Jesus calls you and calls me by name too. We need to put ourselves in the kind of spaces where we'll more readily see Jesus, where we will more easily hear Jesus, that we too may declare along with Mary, we have seen the Lord. Amen.